Hey, good afternoon. It's great to see you guys. And today is uh, Jim Becker Live. I'm glad you guys are uh, joining us uh, today. It's great. And what I wanted to talk to you about was how do we gain customer insight on LinkedIn? And, you know, when we talk about customer insight for your business and for you in order to improve their experiences, how do you improve the experiences of the people that are looking for stuff, looking for more insight on you? I guess the question comes down to is why? Why do all that? Well, how can you anticipate your customer's needs if you have no idea what they are? You can't just assume everything. Trust me, when you assume, you really mess up things for you and me. So don't assume. By understanding how your customer behaves and how they feel about your business offerings, you can better serve their needs each and every time in a way that suits them, not necessarily suits you. That's the plan and rule. Treat people how they want to be treated. The golden rule is treat people how you want to be treated. So we got to get away from the golden rule and get to the platinum rule in a way that they see it's a true value. So today I wanted to get into your, the thoughts, into the why of customer insights and why they are important and a few methods of actually getting them. As I am going through these myself, let me know what's showing up for you. Put your questions down below and I'll be more than happy to hit those at the end as I hit my conclusion. So let me know, are these methods useful for you? Are you currently using these methods? I'd love to hear everything that is showing up for you and really get to your customers' insights. So why are the customer insights important? Well, first off, you know, it's, it's really important to know the why. Why are your customers' insights important? I mean, think about that. Well, customer insights give you feedback on your services, your product, and how you are performing overall. It's almost like a 360. This allows you to pinpoint any issues and address them in a timely manner. Everybody wants to get information back as soon as possible each and every time, don't they? I know I do. With an inside look into your customers' behaviors and needs, you can enhance your products and services to outshine the competition. I mean, if you have no competition whatsoever, then that's fine. But I'm really always competing with myself. Are you doing that? Are you competing with yourself or are you competing with others? Do you know what others are actually doing? What's your competition doing? Are you there? Or are you just competing with yourself and you're all good? I like that. But these insights will help you to understand how you can improve your quality of service and refine your overall customer experience. It also lets you get to a, a better view on your target audience and helps you customize your marketing and better your appeal to your niche. Now, on to the methods. And methods are really important. And some of us overlook the methods or we don't go back to them or we don't learn them. We don't take them to a level of mastery where we own them, where it's on our mind right away and we can just throw it out there. We need feedback questionnaires. This is with your team, like a 360 or with your company by surveying your teammates to find out what's really going on. How do they really feel? And not really having retaliation on that, but listening to them and finding out what their needs are and actually fixing them. The first method I want to talk about is that feedback questionnaire. Companies frequently use different types of surveys and feedback questionnaires to further understand their customers' feedback. And one way is the feedback questionnaires. 
are exactly what they sound like. And perhaps they're, they're easier. It's an easier way to get the customer feedback. This is also like a customer hierarchy. Surveys and feedback can lead to a powerful takeaway that you and your team can actually use. They can give you the quality insights into your brand's performance. Some people don't even pay attention to their own brand. Some people hire large organizations to work on their brand quality. You can change up the questions to ask customers about particular services or products or overall performance of what the business has to provide them. They can be customized to your unique business needs as well. You could do a sample size to just your, your certain enterprise customers or nail all your customers with the same questions. For example, a net promoter score survey measures customer loyalty and the likelihood of them recommending your brand to the friends or associates or acquaintances. Customer satisfaction surveys track how your customer feels about your products, your service, your brand. And what are the capabilities of the service that you're actually providing? Now, the downside to all of this is the mode alone may not be enough to give you the full picture, but it's a great start. And doing nothing to this is a huge start. We can get into the details of it later on. Next is sales trends. So I'd like to talk about sales trends. Sales trends refer to the sales related information that helps you create effective sales and marketing strategies for your business, for your team. As customers interact with your business, they will typically make sales inquiries that hint, just hint at the service, at their preferences or their needs. You can piece the data together to create a solid sales framework. Don't get trapped into everything is just about price. They're lying to you if that's the case. And you're lying to yourself if you don't dig deeper. To establish your, your sales trends over time, pay attention to the product availability with the inquiries, especially at your organization. And what offerings vary from product to product or service to service. See, we're in transportation. So the service or the product inquiries of a hotshot shipment, expedited, refrigerated, vented, or dry load or you know, flatbed load or double drop or step deck, all of these are different. You can't just put a blanket across and say they're all the same. You should also look at promos and product features that your clients ask about. This will give you a, a clearer picture, clearer idea of what they really want. It's so great to be able to listen to a conversation or mediate a conversation where one person, A, and is talking and B is receiving the information and I can sit in as C. What I see as C is different because A is saying one thing, B has their own agenda and they're listening to it. The C up here can really see what's going on on both A and B and can really identify where the gap is. So how will this actually help? You might be wondering that, right? Well, it helps you know why your customers choose one product or service over the other. You'll be able to identify the products that they have in, that you may have in high demand or that they need in high demand. Plus, you'll be able to track the product demand spikes through each cyclical market or time period. I mean, in the city of Chicago, shovels and snowblowers are flying off the shelves. That won't be the case in July. So when we look at this, it's really understanding what's going on. 
what trends are going on, what type of products are being sold. I don't think many Christmas trees are being sold in February. They're not. But in January and end of November, right after Thanksgiving, that was the case. We want to use your own tools. So what tools do you have? So this next method is pretty much straightforward than it sounds, right? So you're running a business already. You're managing a group of people inside of a business. You're managing your own business as an account manager or in operations. So use the data and the analytics from that to get your customer insight. It's a great start. Hopefully you have a data team. You can start off by looking at the web traffic that's coming to the website. Are you looking at that? Do you have the code embedded into each page? You can use this to see what your customers are interested in. And even if they don't complete a purchase, how much time do they spend on each page? I can tell you it's, it's about 1.2 seconds. In some cases, it's even less. But where they're spending more time they may be more interested in those pages. Identify that. It will help you pinpoint where customers come from, whether it's search engines, email marketing, third-party sites that they're going to, or other sources. You can also see what pages on your website that they've looked at and for how long. I mean, there's some data. There's some gold in them hills. Utilize it. Seek it. Find out what it is. In addition to looking at the web data, I'm sure you have a customer service area that's managing those customers. There's got to be issues that those customers are having, and those customer service people in that area are actually pulling that information or documenting it or you're not paying attention to that. Customer support tickets are qualitative data that you can analyze for deeper insights. You can learn a lot about your customers by looking for trends in chat interactions. Look at your team chat if you use that. What's showing up all the time? What problems are your staff having? Or you're not looking at that. Email customer service responses and social media conversations. What's happening out there? Are you looking for that? Now, this is this one isn't exactly a tool, but take a look at your reviews. Customer reviews give a glimpse into how customers experience your product or service, sometimes in great detail. Beyond providing the rating score for um, a, a certain component, reviews are rich. They're really rich in source of insight because they are unprompted and often highly descriptive opinions for customers or employers. So before I go to the conclusion, let's just take a look and see if we have any comments. Um, let's just take a look here. Uh, so no questions. This is great. Thank you. I appreciate this. So let's just conclude. As you can see, the challenge is not the lack of data. There are vital, endless sources of customer information that's available to you. The key is which source are you going to collect the data from? And how are you going to analyze it? Are you using BI? Are you using Tableau? Are you using just statistics on a spreadsheet? All of these are acceptable. The longer you look at data, the more it's going to tell you a story. If growing your business is just going to be a voyage that you're on, great. Then customer insight is both the compass and the map that you really need along the way to help you stay on track. See, these OKRs, objectives and key results, or KRAs, key responsibility areas, or KPI, key performance indicators, 
We need to know what these datas are telling us. There are maps. It helps me with my relationship with my wife, with my kids, with my peers, my executive team, my board, and my staff. If growing your business is just like going on that voyage, you definitely need that map. You definitely need that compass. Once you've figured out how to collect and analyze the consumer insights, you'll have building blocks that you can actually start building a good foundation from and really identify the need for your customers and keep those customers happy. It's because of those customers that keeps us in business. It's because of those vendors, those partnerships, those carriers that we stay in business. Listen to them, get feedback, identify their needs. That data will help you create a strategic plan, database plan on how to grow your company into the future and keep your business in sync each and every step of the way. Gain a clear picture of what it is and what it isn't. See, you know where to make improvements. You really do. Repeat this process consistently. And you'll be able to, well, I guess, on your way to building a brand loyalty and keeping the customers around for the long haul. I wanted to say thank you very much. It's been great being with you today. Leave your comments. Even if you're seeing the pre-recorded, watch it and leave your comments. I would really like to hear what you have to say or questions that you have, or what are you doing already? If we all share what we're doing already, then we all have more ideas. That's what this network promise is all about, really sharing the information to get it out there of how we're doing things. I'm just a catalyst for that. I want to thank you very much. Grace and peace this week. God bless you. Yeah.